In Surfside, Florida, Governor Ron DeSantis is scheduled to hold a press conference on this morning, addressing the recent attack in Israel that occurred last Saturday. Governor DeSantis will deliver his remarks at the Bal Harbor Shoal, where he will be joined by Lieutenant Governor Jeanette Nues and Israeli Consul General Mayor Elba Storinsky. During this event, Governor DeSantis emphasized the importance of leadership in these critical times, calling on the president to unite the nation in the fight against terrorism. He expressed concerns about the Biden administration's decision to ease sanctions against Iran, asserting that the United States should not endorse policies that bolster the Iranian regime financially. Governor DeSantis pointed out that when Iran gains more financial resources, it doesn't necessarily benefit the Iranian people but is rather used to fund acts of terrorism across the Middle East and globally. These funds find their way to organizations like Hezbollah and Hamas, contributing to destabilization. Governor DeSantis firmly stated that there is credible information linking Iran to the orchestration of the recent attack on Israel, despite their denials. In response to these concerns, Governor DeSantis advocated for the utilization of all available means to cut off the flow of money to the Iranian regime. Notably, Lt. Gov. Jeanette Nuez was among several Florida leaders who attended a Stand with Israel interfaith rally in Aventura on the preceding Monday night, demonstrating their solidarity with Israel. DeSantis is not alone in raising concerns about the Biden administration's policies. Several Republican presidential contenders criticized President Joe Biden over the weekend, placing blame on his administration for creating conditions that allowed the terrorist group Hamas to carry out a devastating surprise attack in Israel, resulting in the loss of over 700 lives. Former President Donald Trump, the front-runner in the GOP primary, asserted that Joe Biden's incompetence and weakness had paved the way for the attack on Israel, stating unequivocally that it would never have occurred under his leadership. He emphasized the contrast between the current situation and the historic Abraham Accords signed just four years ago, which normalized relations between Israel and the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain, a diplomatic milestone achieved during his presidency. President Donald Trump, the front-runner in the GOP primary, asserted that Joe Biden's incompetence and weakness had paved the way for the attack on Israel, stating unequivocally that it would never have occurred under his leadership. He emphasized the contrast between the current situation and the historic Abraham Accords signed just four years ago, which normalized relations between Israel and the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain, a diplomatic milestone achieved during his presidency. The Abraham Accords, brokered by the U.S., marked the first time in decades that an Arab country officially recognized Israel's sovereignty. Trump seemed to suggest that the Biden administration's recent deal with Iran, involving a prisoner exchange and the release of approximately $6 billion in frozen Iranian oil funds, indirectly funded the Hamas attack on Saturday. It's important to note that these funds were not U.S. taxpayer dollars. Other Republican presidential contenders, including former Vice President Mike Pence, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, Senator Tim Scott South Carolina, and former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, echoed this allegation in their statements. Senator Tim Scott, while campaigning in Greenville, criticized the Biden administration for exacerbating the Israel-Palestine conflict by providing $6 billion in funding to Iran. He argued that Biden's perceived weakness had invited such attacks and turmoil on the global stage. Hamas terrorist attack on Israel today is an assault on Western civilization. The truth is though, Joe Biden funded these attacks on Israel, South Carolina Central. Tim Scott said, America's weakness is blood in the water for bad actors, but this is worse than that. We didn't just invite this aggression, we paid for it. Iran is the biggest funder of Hamas. This is the Biden $6 billion ransom payment at work. Chris Christie, in a social media post, called the Biden administration's release of $6 billion to Iran idiotic, 
aligning himself with the criticism of his fellow Republican rivals. Governors Doug Burgum, North Dakota, and Asa Hutchinson made similar connections between the attack and the release of humanitarian funds for Iran. Entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy, condemning the attacks as barbaric and medieval, emphasized the importance of Israel's right to exist and defend itself. He also called for preventing Iran-backed groups like Hamas and Hezbollah from achieving their objectives and committing war crimes. Former Vice President Mike Pence wrote on social media, This is what happens when POTUS projects weakness on the world stage, kowtows to the mullahs in Iran with a $6 billion ransom, and leaders in the Republican Party signal American retreat as leader of the free world. Weakness arouses evil. Former UN-Ambassador Nikki Haley, a staunch supporter of Israel, also condemned the attacks and pointed to the Hamas-Iran connection. Make no mistake, Hamas is a bloodthirsty terrorist organization backed by Iran and determined to kill as many innocent lives as possible. The reports out of Israel are horrific with a stunning number of dead and wounded and should be universally condemned, Haley said in a statement. Like, share, and subscribe for more content.